We just came off of an awesome episode of Top Chef Amateurs with Bettina and David. I'm so excited to eat your food. <laughs> my food? <laughs> you wanna eat my food? <laughs> you know, this was a fish challenge today, and fish can be really tricky. You know, it's all about finesse, and you have to have a lot of accuracy and precision when you butcher a fish. So make sure that fish is nice and dry so you don't slip and cut yourself. And also fish, you know, when you cook it, it's very delicate, so it can overcook very easily. As long as you have a hot pan, it cooks in less than three minutes. When you're in this kitchen, it's all about flavor and proper seasoning, good acid, enough salt, enough heat. I think it needs salt. Yeah. Are you able to taste for me too? Yeah, I can definitely taste but for you. I think you. it needs salt. Mm, mm, mm. You gotta have like a really balanced dish, and that's oftentimes what we're looking for. And then in the flour, do you want to season anything, like cayenne, salt, pepper? Just salt and pepper. No cayenne? No you cayenne. Sure? I want it in the um, sauce, Okay. not on fish. Bettina's dish was really fantastic. I would say the one thing I would correct is just adding a pinch more salt onto the fish before dredging it, and also seasoning some of that dredge, and then cooking it. It's just a touch under seasoned. For David's dish, I would say just to crisp it up a touch more. You know, he needed a little more browning on that skin, and it would have been a perfect dish. Great job, guys, both of you. We did good. <laughs> So tonight's episode of Top Chef Amateurs was the deconstructed lasagna challenge. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. All right. Let's go, yeah, Eric. Okay. Let's yeah, yeah, we're doing good. The key to a really good lasagna for me is you know the crispy edges, the melted cheese, that you have a really flavorful filling and texture through your pasta dough. Your time starts now. All right, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? All right, so we need ground pork. Oh. Ground pork. You know, I thought what worked for Kayla and her dish was that her filling, her sauce were really, really flavorful. I was thinking uh, anchovy paste. That would wrap all of that together. Yep. Let's see if we can That's right here. Some. We got some anchovy paste right here. Using anchovy um, in there, building that umami right away, I thought was really nice. Would have loved to just seen a little bit more sauce to take that a little bit further. I'm thinking about doing like a Korean spice with the lamb, okay. so maybe Korean chili paste. Yes. And for Antoine, I thought he really, really went bold with the flavors. I loved the lamb and gochugang combo. That was killer for me. Can you taste that sauce? Yeah. Let me know we need. I think it's really good. Really? OK, good. Would have loved more texture to the dish, but we had a couple contestants who loved packing up big, bold flavors. So that was really fun. Hi, I'm Isaac Toops. We just got done shooting Top Chef Amateurs, where we did some awesome butchery work. And now I'm going to walk you through how a professional does some butchery work. You can start there. The thing to remember with butchery is you can have the, the filet mignon right here, and you have your New York strip right here. And the trick with these is to follow the bone. So you see your bone, it comes up through right here, and you can really feel it. Put your fingers on it so you know exactly where it is. And then you just open it up with your hands you'll see this called the fascia plane. And you can literally do it with your fingertips. Don't worry about using the knife so much as in your hands. Your hands are awesome butchery tips. You're gonna peel it out just a little bit and then we're gonna start cutting. You just come down straight and you'll feel it across the bone. You're not gonna cut through the bone with this knife. Come up underneath, slice it, and then we're gonna remove our filet mignon. Bada bang. Come up over here, take the fascia plane right off. Do that a couple times. I like to leave the fat on, take the chain off. Having a sharp knife is the key. Now you have your beautiful filet mignon. I like to leave these little pieces of fat on because they absolutely taste delicious. New York strip, everybody. Knife gets a little slippery. Grab a glove. And there you got the wonderful New York strip. Little salt, little pepper, little grapeseed oil. And that's all you need. Sprinkle it from up high using the rain method. Nice and even. Don't worry about wasting any salt. Salt's cheap. Not to mention, you just do this. You're not wasting any salt. Season both sides. Sear them off. Roast them in the oven. Finish them with a little butter. Who's hungry? What's going on, everybody? This is Chef Eric Atchapong here with Top Chef Amateurs. We had a mise en place challenge. And it's really important that you guys actually know how to work your way around mise en place, right? Everything in this place. Onions, peppers, right? We use them oftentimes for our breakfast, hash browns, whatever the case is. And anytime I'm working with an onion, 
I never want to feel like I'm not in control, right? You never want to kind of chase it around your cutting board. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just take off just the top, create a nice stable surface for myself. It's not rolling around on me anymore. I can go ahead and make my next cut right down the center. Now notice I kept that root end intact. It's going to be really, really helpful. Using a bird's beak method, take your uh, non-dominant hand, in this case my right, I use the first bend on my knuckle to kind of add, act as a guide. And from there, I'm going to be making about an eighth of an inch incision. Again, using that bird's beak method, my hands are nice and out of the way. That's the first one. Second one, I'm going to come right here. We're going horizontal. Get at least one incision. If you can get two, that's perfect. Just like that. And then last but not least, guys, we're going to go ahead and finish up the dice. Same thing, Bird's Big Method. Nice and even on our cuts right there. If you have nice chunks or anything like that, you can just run your knife through it really quickly. It's all about uniformity, right? You want to make sure that all of the, uh, the things that you're cutting up are essentially the same size, right? You want everything to cook at the same pace. So what you do here definitely translates to what happens over at the stove. We have our pepper here, same rules, right? I don't want to chase anything. I'm going to create a nice stable surface for myself. Go ahead and just take the top, remove the bottom. Now that I have the pepper nice and exposed, I can literally cut anywhere, right? It's nice and stable on my cutting board. I'll find my incision right here, put it on its side, find that incision, and then essentially kind of use the pepper to uncoil itself. Cut it in half, make it a little bit easier. You can get your strips, like so. Stack them up like we're doing right now, and then go straight forward. Beautiful dice. Thanks for watching me. Top Chef Andrews. See you next time.